Today we have coverage of athletic training, senior assassin, and a visit to the local elementary school, all coming up on MOB. Welcome back, Marcus, and happy Halloween. I'm Ali Evola. And I'm Anuva Rashid. Sports medicine is a class you might not have heard of, but some of its students end up on the field helping our athletes. You may be used to watching players on the field and familiar with seeing coaches lead teams to victory, but have you ever wondered who the people carrying waters, taping athletes, and setting up the field are? Athletic trainers take Sports Medicine 1, an anatomy-focused course and are then invited to Sports Medicine 2. In the Sports Medicine 1 class, uh, as part of the curriculum, it's, they're required to work the freshman football games. Um, but the first couple of weeks is just getting them accustomed to being at a football game and being on the sideline. The ones that do well in Sports Medicine 1 go on to Sports Medicine 2. And that's like a hands-on class, and that's where you learn how to tape, how you learn how to do first aid, CPR, all that stuff. The skills athletic trainers develop in sports medicine help them assist players during practices and games for sports like football. Normally during football season, um, we get there pretty early, like around 6, 6.30, before the guys get there. We'll attend to the athletes that need like, to get their hands or ankles taped. We'll do rehab on them, just help out any guys that are injured. Athletic trainers attend every practice and football game, arriving earlier than players to set up the field. I feel like they definitely need more recognition. They, they help so much. I really like the program. It's super cool. Um, you get to make a ton of new friends and the people in the program with you, like you spend every single day, all day with them. They treat us around the same level. It's kind of like a family. Uh, being a student athletic trainer is a lot of hard work and it's hard to do. Sometimes people don't realize it, but we are like kind of like the backbone of the sports teams and how they're able to successfully make it through a game. I feel like everyone everyone needs a good athletic trainer. We're not just water girls, we do a lot more behind the scenes. This has been Abby Adofaine and Sadie Motzel reporting for MOB. Be sure to thank an athletic trainer when you see one. For seniors, wearing floaties is not just for the pool. Some of them even wear it out in public. We found out the truth behind why. Senior Assassin has been played in Marcus for years now, but this year's prize money takes it to a whole new level. The game is a bit bigger this year than it has been the past couple years. So like last year there were 68 teams and this year we started with 89. And so like the prize pool is almost $4,000. So people are really crazy. They really want that money. Senior Assassin is an annual bracket style water gun game played by Marcus Seniors. All right, just, just. Let's go! It was a floaty day, and they were waiting outside in my bushes at my house. They were willing to do anything. <laughs> well, they ripped my floaties off. <laughs> they, they even broke one. They like, went to our houses with like one of the like, girl fence with like a homecoming proposal sign. So that we would like leave our house. We, we thought like this random girl was like asking us to homecoming. Don't know how that would work. Had somebody impersonate a police officer <laughs> to like knock on somebody's window and like tell them to roll down the window and then they shot them. Part of the game is that kitty floaties serve as protection. I wear my floaties whenever I can, other than like the no floaty days. I'm like, I always see people staring at me and I just like stare back. I'm like, don't look. I own it with confidence. I'm, uh, I walk in there and be like, look at these floaties. After a few issues, the Flower Mound police asked them to change a few rules. I was thinking that like after the first couple of days like Flower Mound Highland Village residents would realize what was going on and stop calling the police when they saw like some teenagers in the street with water guns but that doesn't seem to be the case. There's a lot of mix-ups. There's a lot of like gray areas I'll, I'm gonna be honest like there are several times where like depending on how you interpret a rule like it could go many different ways. 
Team Water and Soak Ski are the finalists for the competition. Check out our Instagram next week to find out who the winners are. This has been Hunter Towns and Anuva Rashid reporting for MOB. No floaties. I'm sure the winners are ready to dive into that big pool of cash. Wait, let's switch it up. I'm feeling spooky right now. Yeah, me too. To get in the spooky spirit, we sent Kristen and Jamie to the scariest house in the block. In a quiet corner of Flower Mound lives a hardworking Halloween decorator. Mine's a little bit different. I'm not the foo-foo like my wife, hay bale and a pumpkin. No, there's kind of blood and gore and there's severed heads. You won't find just your average pumpkin and spider webs at Marty's house. Lots of his decorations are handmade. It starts with the mask, you know, is it, what's it going to be? And then just from there, it's whatever clothes I can come up with. So they're filled with everything. They're just plastic, wood, frames. I mean, there's a technique there. I just, you know, a lot of glue, uh, contact glue. His collection slowly built over time, starting many years ago. Been here about 20, 21 years, and it was probably the next, the first year after I got here. Just, I made a couple of just life-size, I don't know, had some time. And then the next year, Halloween was coming, and I made a couple more. And the next year, I made a couple more. And it just got to be a thing. It's like, well, I gotta make another one. <laughs> So that's, it's kind of an accumulation of 18 years. His decorating isn't something that's simply for his enjoyment, but the community's as well. It's become kind of an event. It wasn't that big a deal in the beginning, but it, it sort of grew. I'll suddenly notice there's a line of cars out there around the corner. It was like... One of Marty's neighbors told us about a year when candy was too expensive. He just couldn't afford to get enough candy. I decided I'm not going to put it up. And I had mentioned to some people, the neighbors here and there, I showed up and there was a bunch of bags of candy on my front door. And the neighbors kind of all talked about it and agreed that, you know, Marty does a lot for, for all of us. It would only be kind of fair and nice to each get uh, at least one bag of candy. It was a substantial amount that, my God, I got to put this up now. I mean, now there's no excuse. Um, for him to not do it just for himself, but for the neighborhood and for the community, I think it's um, really amazing. We hope you swing by on Halloween to check it out. This has been Kristen Renner and Jamie Vandermerver reporting for MOB. That house has some killer style. Make sure to check out the Versic house on Halloween night at 5400 Lutterell Court in Flower Mound. With Halloween right around the corner, we sent two reporters to Heritage Elementary to find out the students' opinion about the upcoming holiday. We went to Miss Albin's second grade class and they had some strong opinions about Halloween. So I want to ask you, what is Halloween? It's where you go trick or treating and knock on people's stores and get candy. You get candy and you get scared. I watch movies with my family, just being scared. Having costumes around and like happiness because you get candy and some kids like to have candy. Taylor Swift. I want to go as a burrito. Um, a zombie bride. I'm going to go trick or treating as um, country Barbie. I was Spider Man or a pirate. A uh, sniffer? Candy corn. Bubble gum? Uh, I like a lot of sour things, so I'd say warheads. Um, probably milk chocolate. I like sour stuff, so sour gummy beers. Like Twix. Mostly mm. hot tamale. Uh, candy corn. Milk duds. Probably this uh, creepy clown decoration that I saw in my neighborhood. Well, I have creepy clowns too in my neighborhood though, and they're really scary. I close my eyes when I turn to it at that house. Zombies attacking me. There's these three pigs at Halloween all the time, and they always steal all the candies. Sharks. I don't swim in the ocean, I just swim in my pool. Skeletons and graveyards, that makes me kind of scared and nervous. Definitely eat the dark when I am alone because then I start seeing monsters. Miss Larkin's kindergarten class also had some calm answers for our questions. Thank you to Ms. Larkin and Ms. Albin from Heritage Elementary for allowing us to interview their classes. This has been Rishi Hanamanlu and Campbell Howell reporting for MOB. 
cute. I hope they're not scared of clowns. A quick thanks to our sponsor for this show, Learning Express. They sell toys, games, books, and more. Located in the shops at Highland Village. Freaky just got fabulous with the Got Booed PTSA fundraiser. It's scare time. With that comes the infamous Got Booed. PTSA has partnered with Love Yard Cards to make this easier. It is $50 per scare and each one sends $5 to the PTSA. How do you do this? Decide who to boo and write down their address. They must be in or near Flower Mound. Type PTSA into the blank for organization. Scan the QR code for the form. Each boo includes Halloween yard cards, a personalized bucket of sweets, and six cake pops from Once Upon a Dream Sweets. Now, who are you gonna boo? Are you scared of cockroaches, Anuva? I'm terrified! These students did not have the same reaction. This is the scary reality of trying to scare someone. Pretty good. I ordered this. In case you can't tell, it's a pack of 100 roaches that I was planning to scare the school with. Unfortunately, this will not be a success story. We tried a couple different methods. Um, I was thinking of going. Oh my, oh my god! Ah! Oh my. Sure it didn't work, but we did try. Is that a cockroach? Here. Ew, bro, what the heck is this? Nice. <laughs> but just as we were losing hope, the unexpected happened. Trick or treat? Treat. Okay, hold your hand out. Here's some candy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Overall, this experience was very very embarrassing. I would recommend not buying these because you're not scaring people with this. This has been Gio Cabal and Campbell Vogler reporting for MLB. That's it for today, Marcus. I'm Ali Evola. And I'm Anuva Rashid. But before you go, we have a creeperific mummy challenge. We're competing against three other teams to see who can make the fastest mummy. Let's go. Oh my god, that was 30. <laughs>